So in 2009, GE started a new business called Energy Storage in the Square, and uh, actually in Schenectady, New York. Yeah, and uh, invested 100 million dollars to open this uh, giant and brand new like facility to manufacture the product, which is called Durazon. It is an industrial used battery, provide kilowatt hours, megawatt hours, like storage capacity. So used in hybrid like locomotives, powers, telecoms, and uh, finding like new markets like from uh, every from time to time. So the this is used a different chemistry. It's different than the it's smaller, lighter than the traditional lead acid battery and the cheaper than the um, lithium ions. So the opportunity was very exciting, okay? But also, they bring the great challenges, say, how could you bring a successful prototype in a lab environment to the mass production? So there are a lot of uncertainties in the process. For example, the process is changing rapidly because we are looking for a very steep ramp up um, like objection um, targets. And the second, you need to maintain the manufacturing cost so you can make the product competitive in the market and find the new market sections. The good part of the story is GE implemented a very advanced PLC system sensors in the plant, and we're actually tracking more than 27,000 variables across the manufacturing flow. So from the raw materials and the products, um, you know the exact what time period these units are produced and uh, what's the environment, temperature, pressures around that time. But data doesn't really equal to the answers. So we still need to predict it in the future and uh, trying to f answer these fundamental questions. For example, can we reach the production goals? How do we change our process? And uh, how do we prioritize that? So some people say, why don't we simulate it? And so at the beginning of this year, we went to the plant, we started a serial of analysis, map the process and do a lot of work to try to extract the attributes from the data, um, basic data pool. We build the simulations and we get out some like very useful analytics out of that, I'm gonna talk about later. So this is, um, in general, like the input output um, models, the flow of the simulation. The simulation is, of course, building any logic, otherwise, I'm not welcome here. And, uh, but it extracts a lot, it uses um, the data from different um, data information, like resource pools. And uh, as output, it tells you the throughput, year, unless planned wild yield, and the working process, et cetera, even about the cost. So due to time limit, I'm not going to talk about everything about simulation, but just to highlight some high level design principles we use there. So from the beginning, the goals of the simulation were very clear, is to understand the system throughput as well as find the improvement opp um, opportunities along the way. So we start from a full plant model, and then we divide that into different areas, which is aligned with their organizational chart. So this helps us to like find the data and the model ownership in later implementation, uh, implementation stage. F and in each area, the process flow link different machines. And for the bottleneck machines, we build a lot of details incorporating operational rules, um, like even build a dashboard, which is very similar to what you see on the production floor, so they can compare them side by side. Okay. So we use the same model for testing new flow and the two for the production control. So in general, there are researchers in the research center to look into the next generation of equipment. And then we build a model for them, and then when those uh, equipment really become real in the production environment, we plug that back into the simulations so we can have uh, like a working model immediately. And along the way, we also try to extract the reusable codes, um, identify the common machine types, and build them into libraries. And uh, so it's, it's very like um, handy features. So it's easier to maintain, easier to develop, update, and you can also use this library in other similar projects. 
And then next, I'm going to talk about the three different um, ways we use the simulation model in the manufacturing decision support like systems. So first, the simulation is very useful to basically explain the causes of a bottleneck. So some, if you go to a manufacturing floor, sometimes you can know the, where the bottleneck is even without simulating, because the, the machines between that bottleneck is like um, is blocked because there's no space for it to um, manufacture, and the, the machine after the bottleneck is diving. Okay. So in this case, this the dials is the machines um, as a bottleneck, but people are gonna find it is very surprised because there are always plenty of space in that dial, so you can put your cells there. So why don't you do that? It turns out it, this machine is kind of a baking machine like uh, would you bake a cupcake in your home but uh, so you need to load your like products in that and uh, take it out with a kind of limited time window but there's a closed system so you have one channel to load and another channel to unload and so if it's working perfectly you will rotate these dials like con in a constant space so you load and unload a certain number of cells into the styles, and uh, when it's finished, you rotate to next positions and uh, load the next uh, like lot. However, this rotate this machine is like operated by the operators, and on the both sides there are variants, for example, caused by robot um, problems, etc. So, um, through the data analysis on the uh, right side right side, you can see there are small variants on both the uh, loading and unloading um, like channels. And uh, because the special design of this machine, they actually interact with each other. So I'll give you an example. For example, you delay 10 minutes at the loading part. So then the two, uh, like two ovens like within that dial is um, have that 10 minutes delay and when it's moved to the unload side, you still need to wait that 10 extra minutes be able to unload that machine because the cells in that dials haven't um, ready for unloading yet. So on this, and uh, when you load, wait at unloading side, you, are, you have to wait at the loading side as well. So this pattern kind of being carried into the, um, again, again, um, like into different, op in just along the time. So it's very difficult to get rid of those um, delays. So we were able to explain this phenomenon using simulation at the beginning of the year and uh, which um, make a lead to a big decision on the reconstruction of that part. So that is one of the um, very useful ways you can use the model. Okay. But um, the major use of this model is more about looking to the future, as you will see here. So it actually gives you the visibility about not the next bottleneck, but what's the next, the next, next. So if you're looking at the first chart, the red point is the baseline. What are you gonna observe in the plant? And the, on the very right side is the target you want to reach. So to reach that goal, you actually need to hit a bunch of points in your line to make it really happen. So. So at the beginning of the year, we also do a, do a serial analysis and then figured all the points that need to improve in the factory. So it, the benefit is you need to see that and you can prepare it early because projects usually involve like a long leader time. So to prioritize projects, there are at least the two criteria. First is you need to solve the bottlenecks first bit, um, like, um, for example, you cannot skip to the third points before you really solve the first one to get the benefits. And the second is, if for those projects who has longer lead time, you need to prepare that early so when you, um, so you can kind of achieve, get the results early. So that's the difference from the, the dash uh, lines and the capacity predictions and the concrete lines. So if you really think about the support out of a plant, it's actually the areas under those lines. So if you can prioritize them and the projects uh, appropriately and uh, plan ahead of time, you actually can get uh, more uh, support of the same facilities. So that is a big business value to the uh, management team. And uh, with uh, like a 
little some like modification and feed in with real time data, the same models can use um, for decisions, operational decisions, not only like a year, but like um, based on hour by hour, but shift by shift. For example, uh, one big problem in a manufacturing facility is the uncertainty is uh, how many operators you're gonna get in the next uh, shift. So it's kind of weird to think about uh, why the machine should be limited by operators, think about how expensive those machines are, but that really happens. Um, because you just uh, constantly get calls from operators say, oh, I have some family emergency. Okay. So you never know like how many people you're gonna get in the really next shift. And sometimes that matters, sometimes it doesn't. But if you really do without a tool to really know the kind impact of that, you end up like using too much overtime than necessary. So and the more and more we find the simulations is in a central point in uh, the whole um IT system for the decision support. So the very a good feature of any logic that I like a lot is you can easily export that to Java codes and uh, it's just run in all kinds of environment. So one prototype we do this year is we distribute the simulation into a cloud environment and we actually test a few different cloud environment. Um, it speeds up our experiments and uh, we say also cool, like we do not really to think about what we run because we can get the output so quickly. And it even gives you like um, real time and decision support case. For example, you can have leadership sitting in a room and you can ask a question and get back, get the results back within like 10 minutes. So it definitely facilitates the conversation and uh, um, very important for the use of the model. Okay, and with, um, with the other components, um, for example, okay. visual, um, like use data visualizations, uh, like a big data, distributed data uh, infrastructures, advanced uh, um, data analytics components, you actually can um, integrate the simulation models with other system, make it a component of a larger system very easily. So that will lead to, as our final vision, to build a simulation a kind of a real-time GPS in the factory floor and uh, guide all the operational decisions. Okay, so that is the, my whole package today. 